Hey guys, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be doing the monthly reading wrap up for the month of March. This month I actually read 18 books. Don't ask me how I did it, but I'm going to contribute a bulk of my reading to the break that we had for like a week where I read a book a day. A little concerning, but I am a concerning person in general. As always, I have my computer here. Obviously, Goodreads is such a good tracker as to what I thought. This month, I read a lot of romance. I didn't really go into my usual murder mystery, mystery thriller because I feel like there haven't been good releases in the past couple of months. I've just been reading fan favorite books whatever I've been seeing on TikTok, etc. I started off the month with My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Oteza Mashfa. I think that's how you say her name. Um, I gave this five stars. I have a whole reading vlog dedicated to this. I'll link it on the screen right now. I basically spent a whole day reading this book and it's one of my favorites. <laughs> this is the type of book that I would recommend anyone. It's just so raw and vulgar. It is controversial and I understand why people may see this novel as controversial, but I think this book is meant to show the inhumane parts of society and show people's thoughts and just reality in general. And that's why I really like this book. It's not something I could ever relate to. It was like a good time and it was funny and it was kind of stupid and a little concerning, but yeah, five stars, started out the month strong. And then I made that video where I read contemporary romances for a week. So I actually have full in-depth like analysis and my thoughts on these. Also link the video up in the screen right now. The first book I started out with was The Taurus Attraction by Sarah and Morgan Daler, which I gave two stars. I did not like this book. I think I was being a little nice in my book review for the actual video i did not like the book <laughs> like i remember how bad it was and i was sitting there in my bed reading and i was like what the hell is the point of this book there was no plot like things were just going in circles and circles and circles honestly it's not really romance it's kind of just like people having banter for 500 pages and this book was hella long too it was so long and i wasted my time reading it i wouldn't recommend it i gave it two stars but it has a cute cover, so. Next, I read To Serve With Love. I gave this three stars. I thought this book was fine. It was really basic at most. It's a three star read. Like, to put it frankly, it's a three star read. I wouldn't recommend it. I feel like it's an airport book where you kind of pick it up and you read it for funsies. And it's kind of just fluff to kind of distract your mind for a while. So that's what I thought of the book. And then I went on to read The Roughest Draft by Emily Wiberly, which I ended up giving five stars. That book was so good. It's very similar to Beach Read. It's not as good as Beach Read but I do believe that it is a very similar book and it gives off the same vibes. You have two authors and they're forced to be in the same place after co-writing a book and they need to sort of figure out their problems and you kind of get a backstory as to why they broke up as authors, etc. Next, I read The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I heart this book so much. It was so good. I read it in a day, I believe. And I just love the plot. You have grumpy sunshine and sort of like a workplace type romance, but not really. Um, and it combines science just a little. And yeah, I love that book. It was really cute. And there's like some family dynamic that goes on. And honestly, I'm not a big fan of like family dynamic tropes, but Christina Lauren killed it with this one. Okay, so after I finished the reading challenge, I started the Dreamland Billionaire series, which is inclusive of the fine print and terms and conditions. So I started off with the fine print and I gave that five stars. Both of these books are Grumpy Sunshine. So if you're into that, it's good. And it's also by Lauren Asher, who has easily become one of my favorite authors. I love her novels and her books and yeah i don't remember much i'm sorry but i just remember i don't know it gives off very vacation vibes a little they have their own um theme park going on and it's a bunch of rich brothers so we love rich people okay and then i read terms and conditions which i gave four stars a marriage of convenience book i believe and i don't know why i gave it a four as opposed to a five i don't remember why i couldn't tell you but both books are very good and i highly recommend them to anyone so after reading lauren asher i kind of went into a mariana zapata phase so i started off with from lukov with love which is such a hyped up book and honestly it lives up to the hype mariana zapata is the queen of slow burn and i will advocate for that but it's not a bad slow burn like you just keep on turning the pages and this book was so good. I feel as if Mariana Zapata does the grumpy sunshine in the most elite way. She knows how to write and not make it cringy, if you know what I'm saying. And I love both of these characters, Jasmine and Ivan. They are my OTP. 
and I just loved the book. It was so good. I think that might have been my favorite book of the month. I'm not sure. And then next I read The Wall of Wind Peg and Me, which is also a Mariana Zapata book. I didn't like this one as much. I gave it four stars. And let me tell you, this book was bad. It was a long read. It probably took, I think, a whole week for me to finish. And I'm a pretty quick reader, I'd say. But I enjoyed the plot. The only thing that made me shave off a star was that two characters kind of form a romance out of nowhere. Or at least that's how I felt. And I just, I didn't understand their chemistry. And I didn't understand why they got together as a couple. But overall, the book was cute. It was interesting. I liked it. Okay, the next thing I read was Good Girl Complex by Elle Kennedy. This is like a fairly new book. It's very summer vibes. I don't remember much. I gave it four stars. I definitely prefer the Off Campus series and Briar U as opposed to this book. I believe there's going to be a second one, so there will be a series. But it wasn't anything special. It wasn't memorable. If I don't remember the plot, then that says something. But I believe I read this in a day as well, so you can try it out if you want to. It's up to everyone's own interpretation of what they think about it. Personally, it wasn't the biggest fan. Next, I read a book called Love at First Spite by Anna Collins. This is a book I kind of picked up in the new section at my library. It has a cute cover. I'll say that, but besides that, the only memorable thing about this book was that I took, I think, a week and a half to finish it because it was just so dreadful. And let me tell you, it was a skinny book and I could not read it. But this year, I'm really trying not to DNF books because I'm trying to finish books. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to give things a chance, but really, this book did not do it for me. It was, I remember it being stupid and I was sitting there reading like, bro, this is not it. But it was worth a try. I had the experience, but I wouldn't recommend it. It just wasn't good. And then I finally read Some Kind of Perfect. To finish off the Callaway Sisters and Addicted series, I had been avoiding the book and I think it's because I didn't want to close the chapter on such a good book series, but I rated this five stars. It was so good. I love the Richie sisters. I think they can write anything and I will literally be obsessed with it. I mean, all the characters. I love all the characters so much and we watch the characters develop as people, which is what I enjoyed because it's not a two page epilogue. It's a literal 700, 800 page epilogue that you're reading and I loved it so much. Okay, and then after that, I read Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, which is the second book of the Bellinger Sisters series. Um, I gave this four stars. I like this. This was a book with Fox and Hannah and I enjoyed this book much better than it happened one summer. I liked the plot better. I liked the banter better. I liked everything better and I liked the characters as well. Um, I don't remember much. I gave it four stars. It was a good read. I'd recommend it. Next, I made a pretty big mistake in reading the Devil's Night series. When I thought I was getting into dark romance, I thought it was going to be like academia, whatever. But no, there are so many triggers in this book. It's absolutely insane. I felt a little uncomfortable reading both books because it's graphic, it's vulgar, it's kind of gross, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it definitely does take on the title of dark romance. I read both Corrupt and Hideaway and then I just stopped. I really couldn't do it. Um, the triggers in this book don't really apply to me, but while reading, I felt triggered myself. Like it was uncomfortable and I was like, let's not. I gave both books three stars, but honestly, looking back on it, I'd probably give them both two. It's just not my thing. I honestly am not a big fan of Penelope Douglas. I didn't like it. I didn't like the characters. I feel like they weren't redeemable. And knowing in the third book, this character that does so much harm to the other characters gets an arc and a redeeming arc and everyone falls in love with him. I just like, I can't see past it. So I stopped reading it halfway, but I'm glad that I finished both books because it was an experience. <laughs> okay, and after that, I read The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams, a standalone book. I rated it four stars. I thought it was cute. It's like a friends to lovers, like you don't really know if you love me and I'm not good enough for you type romance. Looking back on it, a bit stupid, but you know, it was a nice easy read. I think I finished it in a day. Uh, I don't remember much. I wouldn't, you know what? I would recommend it. I think it's a cute book. I feel that some people can find it annoying and there are certain tropes that some people don't gravitate towards or can't stand at all. So look out for that. Search at the tropes, do your thing. Next, I read Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score, which I rated three stars. I feel like this book overall was an okay book. It has very high rating on Goodreads and I can understand why, but I'm just gonna put a spoiler alert here. Um, skip forward a couple seconds if you don't wanna hear, but I feel like Knox's justification in him breaking things off was kind of stupid. He, he 
kind of like tells himself he's like i'm not good enough for her and she and like i'm so bad for her and she deserves better which is why i'm gonna break up with her and let me tell you i hate that trope i hate that trope with the burning passion i think it's so stupid like dude recognize your own self-worth I mean, you're in a relationship for a reason and you're gonna break it off because you think you're bad for her? Like, police, I hate that trope. I hate it, I can't stand it, but I understand why it was put in. You need to find some form of conflict in a book. So if that was the given one, Besides that, I thought it was good. If you're not as easily irritated as I am, I bet this book would be rated higher on your scale, but for me, it was a three. Okay, and then since I was just struggling with reading, because I got into a reading slump after reading Things We Never Got Over, I wanted to start a series because I feel like that kind of amps up the reading experience, and I definitely am glad that I chose a series. I went to the trusty author, Lauren Asher, and I started the Dirty Air series. So in total, this series is about Formula One racers and their friend group plus relationships obviously relationships is like it's a big part of each book but also friendships on the side so you get to know a whole friend group which i miss i started off with throttled which is the story between noah and maya it's kind of like we're not allowed to be together trope and like i don't know not best friend's brother but like your teammate's sister and you're not allowed to date her that's the trope i thought it was good i gave it four stars um writing as always is great and the plot is great i don't remember a lot but i gave it a four so yeah and then next i read collided which is the second book in the dirty air series which is between liam and sophie i think i enjoyed this book much more although i gave it both of the books a four this one ranked a bit higher it's kind of a friends to lovers type dynamic and it was cute i liked it he's british i believe and i don't know i thought it was a fun book it was fun i liked their dynamic a lot more and i like their banter a lot more obviously um it's funny it was good and it was a cute story but it does include the trope where it's like i'm going to break up with you so that you can pursue this without conversation i'm just gonna break up with you so that was the only thing that was annoying that's why both of these books kind of have four stars because the fights are kind of unnecessary and they can be avoided but ultimately how else are you supposed to come up with a fight in a book and yeah with that being said those are the 18 books i read in march kind of proud of myself if you're wondering where i am in my reading challenge right now i have so far read 48 books this year so far and i'm trying to aim for 100 i think i can do it if i have enough determination i believe so pretty much it for today's video um let me know if you want to see more reading vlogs i will be posting more in the future i just need to get back into my reading swing and i'll see you for next month's reading wrap up i hope you enjoyed i'll see you next time